Hey everyone, so I'm just going to uh, review Legends of Tomorrow Season 4, Episode 2, Witch Hunt. Um, so there's actually a lot of interesting things happening in Legends of Tomorrow uh, in the new episodes. And I'm very intrigued on where some of these storylines are going. I'm actually more intrigued on where some of these side storylines are going than I am with the actual um, main magic arc. Uh, which I'm kind of finding on interesting at the moment. But uh, anyway, there'll be spoilers for the episode from this point on. So, Constantine, at the end of last episode, um, we found out that he wasn't going to be joining the Legends, yet he didn't want to join. He was like, uh, oh yeah, sir, I'd rather cut myself than join you lot, and all that. But then he gets attacked for, by a demon, and that demon seemed to, or whatever it is, and that seemed to change his mind completely, because literally the, the first scene of this episode, he was jumping right in to join the Legends, and he was like, alright, I'm with you dragging a big chest and I thought that was great and um, while I did expect that we were going to have a few episodes of Constantine being like will he won't he join the team I'm kind of glad that we're just jumping right over that to have him join the team almost immediately uh, it one thing the show always does well is just jumping over the unnecessary drama and that's what happened here they just jumped right over it and I'm, I'm happy for that and um, he also gave the ship, well it wasn't him, it was Ray who gave the ship some magic upgrades, which that was pretty cool, so now the the, uh, the ship can counter all this magic stuff. And there was a line from Ray that I loved, when he was like, when Constantine showed up and he was like, yeah I'm joining the legends, Ray was like, oh a new legend, yay, time to upgrade the chore wheel. I thought that was great, and I call back because we always, uh, we saw the chore wheel last season and season 2 I believe. But it was great. But um, the main bulk of the episode took place in Salem 1692 as our legends uh, travelled back there to see the witch hunts and, because they think there's some magic involved. And that was really interesting. Um, we got a nice little callback that might, would be really hard to catch is when Sarah says that she was actually um, there in Salem in 1692 but there was no magic then there. That was like a two second clip back in the season two premiere when all the legends were scattered throughout time and we were visiting each one of them to uh, bring them back to the wave rider. We visited Sarah and she was in Salem 1692 about to be burned as a witch, but that, would la that was like a three, four second scene. So that was a callback that would be really hard to catch, um, but it was cool nonetheless. Um, now the we got a lot more development on the Nate and his dad arc in this episode and while I didn't think I'd be that invested in that storyline, I actually am. It's really interesting and it was cool to see that Nate is actually staying in the Time Bureau headquarters and he's actually going to be working with Ava and I liked how he was the one that ended up getting the Time Bureau their, um, their money back. That was really great and it solidified his relationship with his dad. One thing that surprised me even more though was that Nate is staying behind at the Bureau. I suppose and now they have Constantine on Legends, it's a bit too many heroes on the team so they got rid of one well actually they got rid of Amaya as well although I was under the assumption Amaya was coming back uh, which is weird I, I thought she would have been back by the end of the first episode but yeah um, if she is still coming back maybe they changed it I, I don't think they did though I'm pretty sure she's still coming back but um, yeah so Nate's staying with the, the Time Bureau instead of being on the ship with the legends and that's interesting i'm wondering if this is part of the reason why the legends aren't going to be in the big arrowverse crossover this year is because the characters are much more scattered than normal normally they're all just on the wave rider and they're all just together but this season more of them are spread out so it will be kind of hard to bring them all together just for the crossover and um, i know there's a bunch of other reasons but i'm thinking maybe this has a hand in it um I thought it was great when Nate was having dinner with his dad and he had all the, the historical uh, things he was trying to use to pay for his food. Like he had the, the red card from 1952 and he had, or 55, I forget which year it was, and he had all the, the old coins. And um, that was really good. I, I enjoyed that. And that uh, with the legends, salary is the friendships you make along the way. Um, what else was there? But yeah, we had the, the fairy godmother in um, Salem. <clears throat> uh, that was a... I knew they were going this way, but I didn't expect to like it that much. I thought it was going to be a, a cheesy thing that I wasn't a big fan of. But no, I, I actually quite enjoyed that. Um, we just started singing and using her powers of singing to trap the legends by having like trees come out and grab them a lot. That was great. Um, and that, uh, she's... 
she knows that something's coming after John Constantine, and that she'd rather be in hell than face whatever it is Constantine's facing. This really has me intrigued for what we're doing, and I really hope we're not just going to get another another uh, Mollus kind of type situation. But, um, yeah, and then what else was there? The Rosari, we got uh, her using her powers and a little bit of development for her when she was talking about how humans never really change. They still persecute people even 500 years in the future. And, um, that was some good development for her. And Mick and Constantine was a dynamic that I didn't know I needed until I saw it in this episode. But that's all I kind of really want to talk about. There wasn't much else besides that. See, most of the things from this episode come from being funny and jokes, but you can't really talk about them in the review. But, uh, so yeah, I, I would give this episode an 8.2 out of 10. And um, thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you. Have a great day.